Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman is back. As I said, it is tough to watch. I call to this hearing of the U.S. Senate Subcommittee and Food and Nutrition, Specialty Crops, Organics, and Research to order. Chairwoman Stevenow and Ranking Member Boozman, thank you so much for coming. I thank you for your leadership on this committee, and I look forward to working with you to pass a farm bill. A farm bill that works for small far farmers, rural communities, and hungry Americans. I would also like to thank my ranking member, Senator Braun. And I look forward to working closely with you. SNAP is one of the most effective programs to fight hunger and poverty in the country. In my time in effort in IFAS, as the mayor of Braddock to Lieutenant Governor to now, I have heard from Pennsylvanians about their support for a SNAP. Hunger is not a Republican or a Democrat issue. It's all of our issue that we have to take it on. We need to come together and stop playing political games with Americans' access to food. Americans like Chair about Glory Jor from the North the town of Northeast in Pennsylvania he tells me that his victim was skimming, which was when somebody stole money and he relied from its SNAP EBT. Mr. Jor is not the first Pennsylvanian I've heard this from. I fear he won't be the last. And I will work in this farm bill to modernize SNAP to work to recipients in the 21st century. I look forward to from hearing from you, your witness on this nutrition assistance on the farm bill. And I will now turn to Senator Braun for any opening comments that he would like to make. Well, he staggered through that, didn't he? Joining me is Pennsylvania's Christopher Tremoli, a Washington Examiner columnist. Christopher, he's back. Yes. It's the, the grand return, the all much anticipated uh, return of Senator John Fetterman, yes. Um, it was sad that that was really tough to watch and, and everything, and it's a uh, really unfortunate the what he seems to be going through that he's still being uh, ushered out to the Senate. The other video I, I don't know if you saw or you probably saw is when he was actually walking into the Senate wearing uh, shorts and uh, and a hoodie, and people were like, "Oh, nice to see you back," and he couldn't even speak to them. That was just the whole thing. Is uh, just really I kind of feel generally I don't like his politics at all in any way, but I do feel sorry for him as an individual. Now, where was he? How long was he gone? Why was he gone? He was in Walter Reed uh, for about three months ago. He, he checked in allegedly to treat himself for depression. Uh, this was like shortly in er, the first couple of weeks in January, less than two months after he uh, officially beat Dr. Mehmet Oz in the election. Um, he was, you know, he, uh, checked himself into Walter Reed for depression. That was, you know, what he said, obviously, other people have made other accusations of what it was really for, but you know, have to go with the everything. They have to go with the facts as we know them at that time right now. So, what is his stature among voters? What are his poll numbers saying? Uh, well, he he kind of squeaked by Oz in the election, so he's never really had broad, you know, widespread support in, in Pennsylvania. Um, he's I, in current so far, kind of like trending around fifty percent. So I've seen some polls where he's down to like 48. Um, I've never seen one above 50. Although it's honestly kind of hard to determine because this, it's now, you know, April and we're, this is kind of the first thing he's done in the Senate. So anything up until this point probably, you know, objectively wouldn't really be fair to judge him on because he hasn't done anything. He hasn't been there. Mm -hmm. I assume uh, newspapers like the Philadelphia Inquirer endorsed him uh, over Oz. What are they saying about his mental capacity, his ability to serve? They're just kind of doing a lot of fluff articles, um, saying how brave he is, how courageous he is, um, you know, for, you know, coming out with the whole depression thing and, 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 and that he's still serving. Um, they're, they're kind of a lot of like uh, pieces that are basically, you know, they're supportive, as it would be expected. It would be kind of shocking that they wouldn't and, and kind of doing the whole thing in where it said he's, uh, you know, like you said before, um, supportive of whole coming out, you know, going for depression while serving. So pretty positive stuff coming from the local media. 
I want to tell you about this truly private messaging app I've been using called Converso. It's next generation with state-of-the-art end-to-end encryption and is designed for people who want absolute privacy and freedom from any form of surveillance, government or big tech. I personally use it. In fact, all of my conversations are on it. There's no tracking, no user data, and no storage of messages on the server. If you want to make sure everything you say stays completely private, you need to download Converso. You can disable screenshots, edit and unsend messages, send GIFs and images. It works internationally and so much more. So get out your phone right now, download it. It's on Apple or Android, and it's completely free. Text me once you're on at 555-358-2019. Again, that's 555-358-2019. This, my friends, is the future of privacy. Now, his wife's been in the news. Why has she become so controversial? Well, there, she's become controversial. She was actually kind of, uh, before Fetterman came on the national scene, she had a bit of a public persona, public profile of being kind of, um, having a personality that was known in, in this state. Um, she was kind of like a, um, you know, I don't want to say reputable, but she just was kind of like a well-known figure, um, kind of had like a demanding type um, persona. Um, I know that I had a, a friend of a woman who I used to date actually interacted with her and she often complained about her um, because it was uh, something that they, in their interaction. So she's kind of always had like one of those big outspoken personalities that uh, a lot of people either you like or you dislike. And obviously it was kind of along party lines, you know, the left kind of liked her, the right kind of had a disdain for her. But recently, or this was probably about a month or so ago at this point, she got a lot of attention because while Fetterman was in the hospital, she went on her social media and publicized going a trip to Canada, which obviously is kind of a, t- took her children with her to Canada too. So that kind of a, drew a lot of controversy. And, and that seems like that's something that if you actually do do, go to mm-hmm. uh, while your husband's you know, recovering in Walter Reed, you probably shouldn't be advertising it on social media. I can't see how you would think that that would come across in any way positive. Um, not to say that she should be by his bedside the entire time with her, her children and all, but it seems kind of like a poor taste for her to do that. So she um, receives a lot of criticism because of that and um, just her overall you know, persona that's known here in the state. Finally, Chris, during the primary, Fetterman was not exactly candid about his, uh, his medical condition. He had a stroke, didn't he, and didn't right. disclose that until after the race was over. Why do we have any confidence he's being more honest about his health right now? Um, we don't, and there's a lot of uh, rumors. Some of them are, are, are in bad taste. I don't want to repeat them because I found them to be in bad taste. Um, mm-hmm. um, but one of the rumors that is circulating, um, and I have no idea if it's true, uh, is that there he would a lot of heat was coming on uh, Pennsylvania Governor Shapiro while Fetterman uh, was recovering. That they wanted to him to you know have a replacement um, because they felt that Fetterman couldn't do his duties. Uh, Pennsylvania Governor Shapiro rejected that idea. Um, there is state law, though, that if a candidate, if a you know, person in office in, in the federal office, Senate, um, is unable to do their duties and the governor wants is to re- issue a replacement, if that replacement is um, announced or that you know, uh, the replacement is renounced three months before the next election, which would be August of this year, um, there's the you know, uh, municipality elections in November, so if he was unable to do his uh, Senate duties and uh, Shapiro issued a replacement, uh, named the replacement, not issued, but sorry, named the replacement um, in August, then the very next election, which would be November 2023, as long as it's 90 days before the election, there would be a general election for his replacement. The working theory is that Shapiro is trying to basically get Fetterman across the, that line um, until maybe you know September or the, whatever the cutoff date is. I don't know off the top. I think it's August 9th, but I'm not positive. Mm-hmm. But it's in August. So basically say if, if, if uh, Fetterman serves until September, then you know he can't do it anymore and he has to resign. Pennsylvania Governor Shapiro can then name his replacement, and that person wouldn't be up to election until November 2024. So that's mm-hmm. kind of the working you know conspiracy theory that's going on now. So he's basically trying to get um, Fetterman across until September. So... Who knows if that's true? Um, uh, that will, I guess that'll be remain to be seen. But it's a sad commentary, just in and of itself. But that's where we are. Uh, in, in. Right. 
Well, the good news, Chris, is that Fetterman owns at least one suit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was kind of like, it was really sad that he was walking into the Senate wearing his shorts and a hoodie still on, but it is good to see that he actually did wear a suit, you know, while in official proceedings. Chris Tremoli, Washington Examiner. Chris, as always, thank you very much for coming on. No problem. God bless. Now, I know you like the show, so hit that like button, hit subscribe, and then scroll down just a little bit. That way you get on our mailing list to make sure that you don't miss any of our videos. For reasons that escape us, from time to time, YouTube seems to have a problem with our videos. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any of them, get on our mailing list. And also, there's a little round donate button. Hit that. Throw a little something in the tip jar. Make sure Epic Times still continues to give you hard-hitting, candid, honest programming. Remember, Larry with Epoch.com, Larry with E-P-O-C-H.com. This is Larry Elder, and this has been the Larry Elder Show for Epic Times. We've got a country to say. Thank you so much for your viewership. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for your appreciation. Out.